And so I will just go ahead and get started because we've got an awful lot of work for people to do, but it's not nearly as difficult as some of the things we've done. Okay. Okay. Mary, are we recording? Yes, we are. Okay, great. Um, I want to get started this afternoon with an update on where we are with registered apprenticeships, the time frame for completion, and where I think we'll be. Um, I want to first say that um, I've been working really hard, and our partners at the three colleges have been amazing. Um, lots of work, lots of time, and lots of dedication um, to get this to happen. So we are getting a fabulous project together, and let me give you some highlights of that. The first thing is that um, we do have a work plan. And as you know, there has to be a work plan for the proposal on what activities and strategies will be in place in order for this project to be executed. And as you look at the project design in Section 3, you'll see that it is an explanation in essence of the work plan, which is the last section of this. So in typical style, I wrote the work plan first. And the work plan very much looks like the outline that had appeared on the uh, base camp previously. The project components are divided into strategies with activities. What I don't have on here yet are the deliverables because I need to be sure that the activities are correct. If in fact they're right, then the deliverables will naturally flow from them. So I'm going to be posting this as soon as we're done with the call. I can tell you that the tenets that we've had in our elevator speech from the beginning, in fact, are the, uh, the goal, the short-term, and the long-term milestones, which we also need to have. So our strategies are laid out sequentially, and the big difference is the, the calling out of the uh, upskilling center. And I talked to uh, Donna down at Arapaho this morning about the fact that it looks like some of the courses we would like for upskilling, for management and for uh, leadership and supervision are in their business mm -hmm. programs. And I have asked her if she would check and see how we might be able to use those. So we do have more meat in the upskilling program than we had um, even a week ago. So that is one addition in that strategy 1E. I have the strategies laid out the way we've seen them since December, and I'm going to post this. If you want to make comments, make them and let me know. Otherwise, um, I think we're going to go with this. You'll see there are also a places to put the dollar amounts, and we have not uh, run those numbers yet, and I have not distributed the money according to the strategies at this point. I find that um, something I don't have to do today. So that isn't done, but you will see the strategy and the activities. Um, if you have uh, ideas about deliverables, please share. Questions about that part? Sylvia, what, this is Mary Jeffries. What document are you looking at exactly? I've been it on is, the call. Is it the now, one with the blue highlights? Um, no. This one is now called the program work, uh, work plan, and it was called the proposal design. Okay. So if you look, the proposal design has evolved into the work plan. Okay. And it's great because the work plan is a critical piece. And when I looked at it, I said, oh, my goodness, we figured this out weeks ago. So it's um, changed its name, and it will actually be one of Appendix D 
um, attachment D, as you look at the proposal, it's a required attachment. So you'll see that one. It's um, eight pages long at this point. There is no length uh, limit on it, and the pagination uh, will be placed on it, but the pages do not count towards the 30. So it's as long, it will be as long as it needs to be in order to convey everything we need to say. So you'll see that one, and um, I'll be putting this new one up shortly. The next document that you will see for the first time, this is a new document that I need your comments on, is called the Capacity Building and Employer Metrics that was requested in the RFP. And you'll see that that document is part of um, Section 2, which is the expected outcomes and outputs. And so these metrics come from Appendix E in the RFP, and I basically took what we said we would do and placed them into these particular, um, they're almost like components. Um, they don't call them anything. They're numbered, one, two, three, four, five. But in, in my mind, they're components or milestones or steps. And they each have a completion date, and there is, when appropriate, a sequential building of, of activity over the five-year period. So you'll see, for example, the first, the first one in capacity building is our project goal to increase the number of registered apprenticeships. And the question is, how will we build them? Will they be built? Um, a certain number, an equal number every year, or does that vary a little bit? Uh, I don't know the answer to that at this point, but those are the kinds of questions we'll need to answer. So this is uh, two pages long, um, ideas of how you think this might lay out, or if you think that, for example, um, they're in the wrong order, or it doesn't make sense, um, those comments will also be helpful because this basically is a crux of um, the activities that drive the strategies. So you'll see this in this form for the first time, even though we've talked about it, and the document with lots of blue highlighting, this mm -hmm. is driven from that document. So it'll just be a different way of seeing that kind of information. And that's content you're sharing later today? Yeah, it should be okay. as soon as we're finished. It will be called Appendix Attachment D Performance Plan. Okay. And it's required um, and is labeled um, as Table 3, but it's probably going to be an attachment. So you'll see it as an attachment. Uh, let's see. The next piece I have to share today is a draft, which we've been asked to do, a draft of a letter of support because it is time for um, campuses and partners to gather up these letters of support that are so critical. And so we drafted one based on the kinds of letters of support that appeared in um, Tax 3 and Tax 4. And this is a pretty generic letter in many ways, but certainly should be edited and changed or commented upon as uh, you see fit. In fact, I'm going to post these. If you give me a minute, I'll post these things now while you're still here and see what you're thinking. I can add those pretty quickly. Questions about the draft letter. They have to have commitments. And so I have uh, commitments for them. Um, questions about those. Now, these are letters of commitment from companies? Uh-huh. Are we there? Okay. So, you're, we need to start gathering those for you is the yes. whole gist yes. of this, right? When yes. do we well, need to have those done for you? Um, I haven't finalized, but we believe we want to submit on Tuesday, April 28th from um, CCD. Marsha, is that date still a good one for you? Uh, yes, that works. Okay, because Marsha is 
um, the lady who's actually going to do that. And so I want to uh, make sure, but it, we think that's the date because uh, it's a couple of days before everything is due. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I just am such a coward. I don't want to do it the last day. No, you shouldn't. That new system kind of oops is on you sometimes. So I'm yeah, afraid. that's smart. I'm very afraid. So <laughs> I don't want to do that. I think that would be terrible. I'm going to add these three files right now. You'll see them up there on Basecamp as we speak. If you want to open them and look at them, I don't have fancy labels on them or anything else, but they're there. Um, so we would submit on the 28th. Um, I am guessing that we would like to have the letters by the 22nd, if we could. We, okay. could wait, we could wait up until that Friday if someone is not available to sign, but it would No, I'm, uh, yeah, I think we need to get a jump on it. I don't like doing letters of commitment in a rush. Well, I don't either, and if there's a problem, um, I don't want to be there two minutes before it's submitted, um, mm -hmm. carrying mm -hmm. on. Um, my record for submission is four minutes before the deadline. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> I would never want to get that close again, mm -mm. Uh, but I did get that money, so I'm, but I don't want to do that. Yeah. Um, so I have those documents for you. Um, tell me what, take a look and tell me what you think. Um, Hi. With either, any of them. And I have written, I would say, about two-thirds of this proposal is drafted, and I hope to have it done by Friday. And when it's done, we'll post it. But right. I, I keep changing stuff in, in the middle, and then I have to go back and say, oh, wait a minute, I called it this, and so it's got that kind of um, alignment. Yeah, that, that circle you keep doing. Yeah, but, you know, I'm getting pretty dizzy here. Um, yeah, it does. It makes you crazy after a while. I can't remember where anything is. No, and then sometimes I just, I'll come to Mary and I'll say, I'm done. I can't write anymore today. <laughs> Um, if you look at the proposal design, starting with strategy 1A, this is what I think we said we'd do. Um, proposal design strategy 1A, okay. Yeah. The start date for this proposal, while not in the RFP, um, I talked to Casey a couple of times about what does it mean, and I've talked to the uh, people downtown, and my best sense of it is we will not be starting until around October 1st. Even if they announce in August, it'll probably drift into September, and then we putter around waiting for letters. I'm gonna put October 1st. If it's sooner, great. If it's not, I have to pick a date. So that is the date I am picking. Sylvia, wait, back me, are we looking at the work plan or? I yeah, what are we looking at? The proposal design. Well, the proposal outline, because what I see is attachment D, work plan, attachment D, performance plan. Okay, work plan. Okay. okay. This is the work plan. <clears throat> and it's got, the, it's got the strategy, the activities, the implementers, costs, and time with milestones. Oh, okay. okay. Now we're there. And it's landscape. Yep, got mm -hmm. it. Okay. All right, so these are the strategies that come from the page with all the blue highlighting. And okay. it's just the way it seems to me the project would unfold. Um, everyone on this call has done lots and lots of projects for various places at various times over the years. And you sit and you say, is this how this goes? And I'm thinking, yeah, probably so. If it's not, I need it changed or adjusted, but to me, this is how it works. Okay. okay. And but, kind of, so can I, how do you want feedback on this? Do you want feedback now, or do you want us to mark it up and send it back, or what's that? You can write on it and send it back. Um, you can complain now. Uh, I'm not gonna complain, but like I'm okay. looking at, I'm stuck on strategy 1A, um, uh -huh. because to me, this sounds like, we have not selected our sectors, and I guess 
but maybe that's somewhere else because I would probably say starting with, you know, X, Y, and Z sectors as a focus and, um, you know, because even where it says review labor market and employer needs, that to me makes it sound like we're farther back than where I think we are. We're, mm -hmm. we're pretty far down the road. If you want to add those things, please do. Well, does that make sense to everybody else that we... Yeah, it does. I think we need to show right where we're starting from. I agree with that. So put that in there because, you know, I feel like uh, we're going to start tomorrow. Um, with this, but put that in there because I think we know. And when you read the narrative, you'll see, yeah, we know um, okay. about these things. So yes, please, those are the kinds of things I'm looking for. Okay. Okay. We've got the strategy to design um, the framework, um, inaugurating the Apprenticeship Academy, which is for the employers, and this is for the the CEOs and the people who are going to work with the new apprentices. Does inaugurate mean launch? Yes. <laughs> okay. Just checking. I have a thesaurus on my desk and I use it a lot. Because <laughs> I get tired of saying plan and develop and so launch. I, look, I look for new words. Okay. Um, especially if I have to put them in a chart together. I want them to think we're very literate here in the West. Um, inaugurate the academy, because I think we have the pieces of it. There certainly is a lot of work that has been done. A lot of companies have ways they already work with apprentices. So I don't think that it's a brand new initiative, but it may be new to some particular companies. They may not have done this in the past, or they may have not done it for a while, or the supervisor might be new. However, you know, kind of, um, the pre-apprenticeship bridge program, that is the one that we need. I need more wording on the basic program, although it's mentioned here somewhere else. In addition, uh, we see that activity is very, very helpful for um, working on a pre-apprenticeship, so you need to tuck those words in where they go. Um, but we do have the pre-apprenticeship program, which needs to start. I didn't pull recruit the apprentices out as a separate strategy, but we could. Um, it's certainly part of the marketing plan, and it could be that instead of developing the marketing plan, we should say recruit the pre-apprentices. That might make more sense. But think about, you know, how that would work. And if you think that would be more useful, then let's change it to that. Uh, we have to have this way of recruiting people. We have some partners that are going to help us do that. But again, maybe it should be pulled out as a separate strategy that we're going to, we're going to emphasize. Um, the upskilling sector, I just added that because that is a focus and we haven't really, we've never really talked about that quite as much, but we certainly are doing it and we will offer that. Um, we have number two, two A and B and C, and they're actually the crux of this. That's the crux of the apprenticeship program is strategy two. Wait, Sylvia, where's the upskilling center? I'm getting lost, but... 1E. E. Uh, there isn't a 1E e on here. On revision three, you don't have a 1E. E. Do you guys see a 1E? E? Guys, I'm, in, I'm doing double duty. I'm working on something else, and I'm about to jump off the call just so I don't disrupt you. Oh, I don't see a 1E. E. <laughs> yeah, you might have a different version. Sylvia. All right. Yeah, I you think want... you do. All right, let me look at performance plan. Oh. You want us to close this version and you post a new one? Yeah, let me do a new one because you need Okay, uh, I'll close uh, this one. Performance plan, it's not the performance plan. Okay, go back. 
So maybe that's why the name was different too. No, the work plan, I'm going to delete that one. Yes, delete that one. And let me add the work plan. Do we just need to refresh and then the new version will pop up? I, I took the... Um, oh, it, it actually, now I can see that you deleted it. It's actually gone, right? The work plan is gone? Yeah. Okay. And the performance plan, um, let me come up here. Oh, Lord, where is it? It's revision three. This one. Proposal design, it's this one. Let me add that one and see if that one looks better. That's the work plan. Does it have that one E on it? Uh, let me and uh, let me open it. Okay. We're not seeing it. Oh yeah, it does. But yeah, well, this one has one E. The new version okay. does. Marsha, okay. it's on a separate page. Oh, it's on a separate page. So there's one E. So this is basically the framework of the proposal and the framework of the initiative. So I've got this and this is what I'm writing from. Now I also have one more document I need to post, which is a spreadsheet of apprenticeships. And this is really important because we have to count our apprenticeships and I have to have a count. Let me post this and you'll see when you open this, there are three tabs on the bottom, healthcare, information technologies, and advanced manufacturing. They have, in some cases, more information than in others. And what we need is information. If you go to advanced manufacturing, it has more information in it. Um, we need these all to be completed so that we can do the count of how many folks we're working with. And if a company says, no, I'm not going to do it the first year, it's okay if they say, I can take a person in year two or year three. We just need to know when that is. So, Sylvia, is this spreadsheet then going to serve as the um, template that you and Marsha and I discussed last week? Because I guess I thought, um, which is fine. I was worried that you, we might need a few more details about, um, I don't know, the, the, you know, the, what's the word for it? The, the competencies that are the focus for oh, the apprentice. The competencies, as I understand it, go in the document to the Department of Labor and they do not have to go in this. However, so all we have to say is this job title, because like I'm looking at this firefighter um, sure. apprenticeship program that I gr grabbed and emailed. Okay. I think I sent it to both yeah. you and Marsha. So really, right. even though this has a ton of detail, all, all we need to say is we're going to do a firefighter, firefighter apprenticeship. It's going to be this right. occupation title. I can see that from the thing, this number of hours. So really, it can be that broad. If it isn't Guys, that broad, I'm I really sorry. This is Mary Jeffries, and I've got to jump off the call. I've got two or three other things up in the air. Um, Sylvia, whatever you post to Basecamp, I will take a really good look at and get back to you okay. ASAP. Okay. And let me know whatever deadlines you've got for me and I'll fulfill them. Thank you very much. I appreciate Thank that you. more than you know. Bye, Mary. Bye-bye, <laughs> guys. Uh, okay, ladies. Um, yes, because if we do more than that, Janelle, the problem is we're going to go over a 30-page limit. Oh, but that's fine because I think it's easier that I thought maybe we needed to be more detailed. I think it's easier to be less detailed. So I think the thing we'd have to say somewhere is yes, the employer will file all the appropriate paperwork for the apprenticeship with the Department of Labor, and we know it has all that stuff in it. Okay. Well, and that seems to me that's the caveat for participating. So. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And DOL number is actually, like on this firefighter one, they're calling it SOC number, so that's synonymous, right? I believe it is. Okay. But yeah, those are the numbers that we have to have so they know it exists. And most of what we want, even in IT, exists, but it may have to be um, adjusted or uh, changed a little bit, but it does exist. Okay. So I, I use this form, um, it's an adaptation of the form we had before and yeah. an adaptation of the form that Amanda was using down in um, Pueblo. Okay. And so some of these, uh, the one from Everett uh, are two that she actually has and this is what they look like. Mm. So I said, that's fine. Where are we going to put the... Um first responders as a separate tab? I think they could be a separate tab, yeah, because I'm not sure we got, we've got health care in the way we thought we would have health care. No. Is that I mean, I, Yeah, I can't remember. Did I tell you that I heard back from Judy and she said, yeah, I like the idea. Did I tell you all this already? <laughs> so I'll repeat myself then. Judy. <laughs> Judy Emery said, you know, because I had, when, first she said, no, we're not ready to participate. Then when I said, well, what if we feed you in in year three? And she finally did get back to me last week and said, yeah, I think that's a great idea. And so once again, I said, okay, well, can we get a letter of support from you and can we pick at least one position that we would start with, you know, that seems like a logical starting point from, for, a healthcare apprentice, and sure. that's the P. And you know, it, I I do have this communication lag, so it felt more positive, but I still haven't gotten that nailed yet. But okay, well, I tell you what, some of that can be. I have got some wishy-washy wording in there that says that some of the groups that worked with us um, can't do it right now, but they may do it later. Well, I'm going to try to get a letter of commitment from them and a, okay. take a stab because what I've said, and I think this is legitimate, is let's pick something. We don't have to stick with it if it turns out that three years from now it doesn't work, but let's pick something to illustrate a possibility. I think, uh, I guess I think that's better than... Well, I think it's great because I don't know what I'm doing in three years. Do you? No. I mean, well, I'm... Barely can get next week done. <laughs> so I'm just trying to make sense of what we have, and this is such a complicated application in terms of how it jumps around and the work plan is at the end of the plan design and why in the world is it at the end where it should be at the beginning and these people drive me crazy with how it jumps from hither to thither, and I'm saying, okay, fine. So are we still pretty clear that we can probably do 600? What about Steve? What are you thinking there, Janelle? I've got, you know, I was out Thursday and Friday. I need to follow up with him because I have not heard anything more from him again. Okay. Um, so I've got to go try to nail him down. Okay, because I don't know from um, CAMA even how many we have for sure, but my sense of it is uh, we have, what did she tell me, 90 some from Pueblo in advanced manufacturing. I think the 600 is the number we're going to need to go with unless these IT people go wild. Well, we won't commit to more, will we? I, mean, I don't we'll... want, no, no, I don't, no, I don't want to do that. Uh -uh. Yeah, I don't think so either. It scares me because if we do, we're stuck. Yeah, I would be, I mean, even if, so even if IT goes wild, I think we'll make it a more conservative number or shave some of the others to give us wiggle room. I don't want to go beyond 600 and we don't really need the money. Yeah. Because I don't know what we would do with the money. I mean, really. I think there's enough speculative stuff in here that it would be imprudent of us yeah. to go beyond 600. Yeah. So we're, I think we're good with that. I've been looking at the other proposals that have been written 
over the years, and I'm not I'm not able to use much of anything there because it, they had such a different focus and a different arrangement. So this is really all new stuff, and I've been writing it, but it is new, and I'm I'm trying to count. For example, the number of employers who worked with us and the number who did this and that. And it's right now it's still pretty soft. The number? Well, I mean, how many employers are really gonna take on apprentices? Mm -hmm. I, don't I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to say. I think it's softer than I wish it were. Um, Did I already ask this question? Is Mary does Mary work for Cama? Yes. Cama? Yes. Yes, she okay. does. Okay. That's what I thought, but I wanted to confirm. Mhm. Mm so I don't know where we are. I notice we have almost no one on the call, which doesn't. It kind of surprises me, but not really. Because it's just the three of us, or is someone else lurking? Um. At this point, <laughs> well, Mary Cornell, who knows all. <laughs> um, no, there are ten people on here. They're just very quiet people. Uh -huh. Yeah, we're we're listening to you all. <laughs> oh, I was going to say because it says eight <laughs> attendees. <laughs> this yeah, is so Tatiana Parker at PCC. So. <laughs> okay, so we've got more people. Oh wait, I can no. See, all I see is calling name and number. So I don't know. Um, but we are, this is coming together. I just am, am not sure about uh, the numbers that we can count for, you know, how many employers do this and how many met with these people and how many did that. Those numbers I don't feel like I want to stop and count right now, so I have X's. Yeah. So. Other questions we can answer for anybody? Um, and. I guess I'll ask this again. I think you all probably hit on hit on this already. I logged in kind of late. I was on a different another call. When or what year is um, like I'm with the Health Information Technology Program. So what year okay. is HIT projected to come into play into the grant? What, what campus are you with? Pueblo Community College. That is your call, my friend. I met you when I was down there, right? Couple yes, ma'am. I was quiet then. <laughs> I know, but I heard I heard that you speak very well. Tell me when you would like that to roll out. That's up to you. Do oh, you okay. have Do you have that program that could roll out with the hospitals down there, or do you know um, when you would like it to roll out? Because that's really your call, not mine. Okay, well, thank you for giving me that information. So now that I have this information, uh -huh. I, can take it, I can take it back to those very important people and okay. uh, and try to see how everything can kind of hash out because they, they keep asking, well, when are we projected to come into play? And I'm like, well, I'm not really sure. So I figured I'd ask this go around, but now I think I have the answer. Okay. Probably looking for so. I would thanks. love to have you if you will do it. We would love to have you. Okay, thank you. Sure. Other questions? Um, yes, this is Kathleen Collins. Um, I'm the Health Information Technology Coordinator here, also at Pueblo Community College, and I got onto the call late as well um, because of another call. But I'm I'm kind of I'm I'm a little bit confused here because um, probably because I came on late, but. Because um, I think we're still in the process down here of trying to, to decide if we have industry support in this process. Yeah, when I was, and, down, yeah, I, I think you're right. Um, when I came down, I did meet with the advanced manufacturing people and the gentleman from the workforce center who works with them and Amanda, and they have their their program a little further along in, in terms of development. My understanding in healthcare was HIT maybe, if there's uh, employer support, and then also the question um, from the nursing program about um, the SciTech positions that potentially were of great interest to the state hospital. And so I have, I've heard back from Amanda that the president is supportive, but I don't have details. So if you have details, we would love to have them. 
Yeah. Well, and I don't, I don't think we do have details. And I know, okay. I know, I was, I was out, and Tatiana went to a meeting um, the week of our spring break. Um, okay. But I still feel like there's, there's a little bit of confusion, and there's still clarification going on with that. But you know, again, as Tatiana said, we need to take um, this additional information okay. back to both health sciences, which would be the area for the psych tech. And then our area, of course, would be the health information technology that we can kind of look at. And you're right, manufacturing here is much further along uh -huh. um, just, with their visions uh, for oh, this process. But it, it's okay. You'll catch up. Um, if you could please, um, are you in base camp? I'm not. I, I actually tried to go in through the WebEx, couldn't oh. do that, and then when I went to base camp, I was probably too late. It told me that the meeting was was not available any oh. longer. So. Oh, I don't. Okay, here's what I need you to do. Will you email me um, and let me know, and I will make sure you get all the documents in Basecamp because uh, I know that that conversation uh, was taking a little bit more time because it is newer and it is coming together. But the SciTech program and HIT are both of interest to us if employers are willing to take apprentices in these areas. And if they can't take them the first year, but they'll take them year two or three, uh, that does not mean you shouldn't be in this. It means we need to know they can take uh, someone in a uh, subsequent year. Right, I think, the, I think the concern was numbers. Because you know we were given a number of something like six thousand and five years, and and potentially, and I know that's statewide, but that's, potentially, yeah. well, you know, certainly the numbers would be much smaller in our area. Can um, you get me? Yeah, but if you could get me a number that makes sense for your community, we would love to have you. So, the number, whatever the number is, uh, we're looking. Okay. Well, you know what, and you you probably don't have to bother with. Sending me documents because if Tatiana got on um, through, uh, I think she did get on through Basecamp. She can print those down and, and provide them okay. copies to me as well. Yeah, so. I'm Basecamp. All right, okay. that's fine. That's okay, fine. very good. But that gives us more information to go back to the meetings we've been having right on campus and talk right. with other individuals about that. Great, because it, there is still time to get in. I can still get you in probably through this week, although I have to say, after this week, it's probably going to be really hard because we've got to finalize um, budget and assignments and that sort of thing. But if you could figure that out for us, that would be great. Okay, we'll talk to the appropriate people here. So, <laughs> sounds like a Thank plan. You. Who else have we got? Qu other questions? I have a question, Sylvia. It's Marcia. Um, yeah. So, we at CCD have a 16-credit-hour um, certificate, and then we've got a computer service and support certificate, which is uh, 31 hours, Great. and those, those could be a stackable thing. Um, but we also have a network security certificate that's 25 credits. Would that be something that well, maybe I should be asking Janelle that you think Steve would be interested in? Well, I mean, that's a good question, but I, um, I guess what I would think, you know, what we talked about last, so where, uh, so where I, my head is at is the honest answer, is to focus first on that really um, entry level certificate, you know, the help desk certificate that we said would feed into a lot of others. I mean, that's, let me talk to Steve. I just, I do need to get, um, just loop back around to him now that I've given him a bunch of information and I, I have not heard a word from him. Okay, because the entry level does seem to be an area of great interest. Mm -hmm. And if that is an area, what you might talk to the folks about, Marcia, is, could they do the entry level first and maybe bring in this other certificate in a year or two? Oh, okay. Because and that was kind of my thinking is let's keep it simple initially. Yeah, okay. Because I think we're going to be scrambling to get this all to happen 
um, regardless. And if we had something that could wait a little while to, to unfold, we might actually have a moment to stop and catch our breath. Okay. Right. So, yes, let's see if we can do that, though. Other questions? Who else is on the call here? Did I scare people by just calling them lurkers? <laughs> no, but I wonder who they are. Because <laughs> they're just numbers here to me. I can't tell who they are. They're say Donna's on the call though. Um, I don't know. It's it's fine. Is there something else we need to decide today? We need the letters by I think the twenty second of April. Is that okay, Marsha? Yeah. And I'm asking people to write the letter to the president of the campus with which they would be working. Right, the letter to the campus, the lead right. campus. Okay. Does that make sense? Because yeah, I, yeah. I don't have a PI to write to. Sometimes oh, that. They, they don't identify anyone? No, we haven't identified anybody to be the project director because. It would be in the budget for us to hire somebody. There's got to be a person, but. It was the last time on the last two TAP grants, the letters were written to the campus presidents. Okay. Uh, and that you makes know, Oh, it makes sense. Because a lot of times what I do is write to the grant contact person on the, maybe on Goofy. Well, you can do that too. Well, no, we can keep it consistent. But you got to write to somebody. Yeah. And I know we did one for, uh, Front Range not too long ago, and we wrote to the PI, but if there isn't one, no. uh, I, I don't know. Right. So don't write to me. I don't want to know. <laughs> uh, what else can we do? The form I've posted, these documents, I hope to have a draft posted here in another two or three days. Because I, I am at the point that I I know what I need to write down. It's just a matter of writing it down. Um, I don't think that adding SciTech will be that difficult if they choose to go that way, and I, I certainly hope we can do that. I don't think it'd be difficult. I've got to get the first responders added in here. I don't think any of that is, is outside the realm of doable at this point. Mm -hmm. So I think we're good. Otherwise, that's where I am, just so you know. We're there. Um, I haven't heard from the CTA people in a while, and I have not, um, I have not reached out to them either. I do well, have... Well, I'm supposed to call Wendy, remember? Yes. I, I Okay. I do have a gentleman coming in to see me tomorrow uh, for a little bit of time who works with Tech Hire in Colorado. Mm. And I want to get connected with them for the group because I believe that that's another area where we'll have a potential to get more money um, mm -hmm. just when that's funded. So I want to be sure that he knows us and he thinks we're wonderful and lovely. Mm -hmm. And he will uh, want to work with all of us and, and share that money with the colleges. Okay. Um, so, uh, Sylvia, and I met with the city and county last week. and Wonderful. One of the things that I brought up with them that from our meetings was that maybe they could do some of the assessment with the, their uh, Conexa Prove It stuff. Okay. And um, they basically said we would have to give them some resources to do that. So. And how much do they think they want? I didn't ask her. I can okay. call back and ask her. Well. They said they would do it for nothing for one of those other ones. Um, <laughs> I think it was the TAC four, but anyway, I don't. But that was before Denise Bryant was there too. Um, oh, okay. So I mean, basically, just she just said they would, you know, they would have to have staff to proctor the assessments and things like that. So they would need some resources for that. And I don't see us using them, them a huge, huge amount. So I'll get back okay. with them and ask them. Perfect. Because that would be really wonderful um, if we could get that. Otherwise. Our evaluation is 
kind of interesting in that we'll have a combination of data, real data collected from a banner and rapids, as well as these conversations that will be facilitated by the outside consultants. Okay. And I, and I also have to follow up with um, Liddy at the Work-Life Partnership because she had sent me some stuff on Friday but uh, owes me some more. Well, that 120 people sounded really good if that would be the right number that might take advantage of their services, and their services sound wonderful. Yeah, I think they are, so I, I need to get a figure from her uh, on that as well. Yeah, I did have a conversation here with the uh, legal people about contracts and subcontracts, and one of the things that they told me was if we have specific groups with which we want to contract and we write that in the proposal, we do not have to bid stuff. Oh, okay. So if you want to work with a particular group and we don't have to bid that service, that would really help us out because the bidding process will take eight weeks minimum and it depends on if we do an RFI, an RFP, uh, the more we do, the longer it'll take, and, and mm -hmm. we can avoid some of that by selecting the group with which we would like to work. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing thing. It's um, information that I've gotten in previously writing proposals. So, <laughs> Well, they tell me here I can get around it. Now, this is the, the lawyer in charge of grants and contracts here. That they should know. And if he doesn't know, then I don't know who else to ask. Okay. No, I mean, I'm, I don't mean from the system office. I mean from, from CCD well, um, and the, and that the I've gotten their information about that. Well, the way to do that then would be to contract, put that money in a contract back over here, and then you don't have to bid. Mm -hmm. And that would save a lot of time and trouble. Okay. I don't think it would save us any money per se, but it would certainly accelerate some of those processes. Yeah, okay. So see what she says, because I think they have a very good program to offer and that would be wonderful. They could do that. Yeah. So I have them and I have the folks from Rehire Colorado and Colorado First. And then we know from upskilling that most of the people who are incumbent employees are recruited from within the company. So uh, that's a matter of getting that information out to people, but not necessarily going out on the street and uh, recruiting because those people are already in the environment. So I'm thinking that wouldn't be uh, quite as difficult as uh, new folks who are not in, in this particular arena at this point. Yes, I agree. So that would save us, and they tell me that down in Pueblo, I heard that from the gentleman from Workforce, and I've heard that up here as well, so I'm going to take that on um, value that they know what they're doing and this is how it would go. So, Marcia, how was the conversation with um Oh, work-life partnership. I was confusing them with rehire. Oh, well, uh, she's very interested in doing some stuff with us, and um, and she just, um, she sent me some information, um, like some, some information about the benefits of, of doing, uh, you know, that kind of retention navigation stuff. And, and there was a presentation. I thought I, maybe I only sent it to Sylvia. I'll send it to you. Um, there was a presentation on there that where she, uh, it was a webinar where she had actually done a little piece about work-life partnership and um, talked about, you know, the, the tension rates that they have and, and, and the process and stuff that would just be helpful, I think, in terms of, you know, talking in the proposal about, about what they do. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I had talked with uh, Katrina Wirt, who is our WIN person, and they have a contract with them built into their budget. And she said that, you know, it wasn't everybody, that it was maybe like 15%. And so I think I changed our number to 
still to be, you know, allow for people to be able to do it. I think I changed the number to 25%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so she was supposed to be getting back to me with, um, okay. she had she had written in some activities in another proposal and she was trying to find that proposal to okay. send to me and then, you know, also give me some, some numbers. Okay. Because okay. anything you write that you don't have to rewrite, I see the benefit of that. Uh, but hopefully she can reach out and, and share that. Yes. So I think we're in pretty good shape. Um, I don't know what else to do. Um, I don't know. As I have questions, I'll let you know, but at this point I'm feeling pretty good about it. Okay. So are you still needing me to send you um, some, I mean, we don't, we, we have somebody working on these really spiffy little uh, career ladder graphics right now, but they're not done. <laughs> so do you need me to send you um, something showing our, what I talked about earlier, the 16 credit certificate, then the 25 credit, then there's the associate's degree at 60? Do you I, need that as an, as, as an attachment or appendix item at all? It might be good to have, what I'm thinking is it might be good to show as an example. Okay. And I could use probably one of them to show an example, like I have from um, um, Aurora, the example of the paramedic and the and the how that works. Oh, okay. So I could send I could definitely send you the advanced manufacturing yeah. uh, piece and our IT piece if you want. That'd be great because the way some of these work, uh, we can't put in too much. But if we have examples that say this is what this looks like. Okay. It would give, I think, evidence that we know what we're doing. Okay, I'll send it. Okay, great. Because I also have some graphics from uh, Brenda about what the badging might look like. Mm, okay. And so I'm just trying to gather up as much as I can and, and get as much information into this document as will fit. Okay. And I, I just, I feel like space is, is my is my great problem, but not quite yet. But it will be in about another day and a half. Uh, other questions? Are we good? I think we're good. Okay, great. If you will take a look at those things, and I will keep writing, and as soon as I get something to post, I will. Okay. Okay, I appreciate your help on this. We're gonna get this one. All right, thank you. All right. Thanks thank for you, all of your work. Yeah. Thank you, Thanks ladies. So. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.